my first guest tonight is a, is a close friend, the husband of Mary Livingston, uh, star of the special which airs tomorrow night on NBC from 8 to 9 right here on this network. And in the worlds of music and comedy, he's a giant. Would you welcome Mr. Jack Benny? You throw a kiss almost as good as Dinah Shore used to do. <laughs> Mwah! How are well, you? Johnny. I was watching you in the other room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that Jack LaLanne joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got There's it. one Milton Burrow won't take. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's Although gotta... you read something in the book that I wish I could do. Which one was that? The line where it says, do something now that you haven't done in a long time, or something. <laughs> I won't ask I what I it is. Do. No. How are you? You're looking I'm good. Fine. We had more fun on your, uh, doing your special, which is on tomorrow uh, night. And in, in a few minutes, we'll show you. I don't know what you brought tonight. Freddie de Cordova told me you brought a little piece of the tape. And I didn't know you were going to leave this in the show. Yeah. Um, I got silly during the rehearsal. Oh, Can I do something? Sure, else? anything you want to do. Because that's why I brought out a cigar. You know, I never smoke a cigar. You never really light them. You don't smoke. No, you carry them around. I smoke only a little bit of a cigar. And the last time I was on your show, I wanted to do a story, a joke about what happened when I drove here to be on your show, and I forgot about it. It has to do with a cigar. And I've, twice I was going to do it and forgot, so this time I thought if I came out with a cigar, then I wouldn't forget it, you see? Well, what happened was, and, and don't go into, com into a commercial, because this only takes 40 minutes. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. But what happened was, you know, when I drive to come on your show, or drive to go to Burbank or anything, I always take Laurel Canyon right. or uh, the other one. Cold water? Cold water, Cold water. Canyon. Now, let me tell you something that happened. This, I was really driving to come to your show. You're not supposed to smoke when you're driving through Coldwater Canyon. Yeah, it's a fire zone. They have big signs there. really not allowed to. You get a ticket if a policeman stops you. And I had a cigar, and I was smoking, and I only take a couple of puffs, no matter how expensive. Now, this cigar, these are maybe three for a dollar. Now, that's fairly Dikes. expensive. That's fairly Three for a buck, yeah. But when I smoke a cigar, I only smoke just, uh, just a tiny bit. I only take a puff or two and I throw it away. And I'm driving through Coldwater Canyon, and I'm smoking. I know I shouldn't be, you see. And finally, I only had, I had a big piece of it left. I only smoked through it, and I threw it out of the window, right out on the street like this. And sure enough, a policeman comes along behind me, and he stops me, and he recognized me, and he laughed a little bit, you know, because he recognized me. He says, you know, Mr. Benny, you should know better than that. You know you must not smoke when you go through any of these canyons. And not only that, but you took a cigar, this is what starts fires, and you threw your cigar away. So then I made up a lie. <laughs> and I said to him, officer, I didn't throw, this is a true story that I said. I said, officer, I didn't throw the cigar away. I did stop smoking and I happened to have the cigar in my hand out of the window and it just slipped out of my hand. And he didn't want to, but he says, look, at, I saw you throw the cigar away. So I said to the officer, Look at it. You want to do me a favor? Now, if I threw it away, you just stop me. It can only be about a half a block away. I'll get into a car, into your car with you, and we'll drop back, we'll go back, and I'll prove to you that I did not, that the, that the cigar slipped out of my hand. I didn't throw it. 
So he laughed. He said, all right, get in the car. So we drove back, and sure enough, about a half a block, or a block, this cigar was lying there about this big. And I picked it up, and I gave it to the policeman. I said, now, officer, do you th really believe <laughs> that a stingy type SOB like myself would throw away a cigar this big? <laughs> Case dismissed. So, he laughed so hard, he thought that was very, very funny. He says, all right, you made me laugh, and that was funny. And I'm not going to give you a ticket, but do not smoke again when you go through. And that was the end of that. That's a funny story. So, and that's the only reason I brought up, because I wanted to tell you this before, and I always forget. You want yeah. this? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> Freddie, you want it? I got another one if you want it. Huh? <laughs> He's yeah. a three for a dollar. You know? <laughs> Don't they make more expensive cigars? I've heard of two dollar cigars. I am, but no matter, you know, no friend of mine will ever give me a good cigar because they know I take two puffs and throw it away. Yeah, some of the people don't they keep their cigars in the humidors down at stores and they go there and have their own yeah. uh, special humidor, very expensive cigars. Yeah, well, this isn't very interesting. What should we talk about now? <laughs> How about your party you had the other night? You and Mary. Uh, had some friends at a party the other night celebrating your anniversary. And it was a lovely party out at, um, what was the Chinese place? On Santa Monica. Yeah. Madame Wu's. We had our, Mary and I had our 47th wedding anniversary. 47 years. And you know that Mary and I get along great. What, what is the secret? Because I have not I don't been know. that fortunate. I think I love her. <laughs> Well, the secret, I think, is when you're compatible, when you, you get along, it isn't, sex isn't everything, you know. Damn it. But anyway. <laughs> We're going to come back and follow up on that in just a second. <laughs> Find out what is everything. <laughs> We'll be back after the short word of interest, and then... Freddy, I didn't mean that. Ah, uh, welcome back to uh, the marital game. We were talking about Jack and Mary being married 47 years, and uh, how you get and along. And then you're... Be compatible. You ask me how yeah. we get along. We get along great. We, we've always gotten along great. I can't imagine being married to anybody else. Now, I do say something on the stage, but I don't think I've ever said it on television, that in the 47 years that we've been married, the way I tell it on the stage, is that if I were to say that we've never had a fight or an argument, you'd know I'd be lying. But I can truthfully say that Mary and I have never had an argument, let's say, or a fight big enough where the word divorce was used. Murder, yes. <laughs> did you I'm ever, glad you led me in there. I don't like, like that. I remembered it from the stage. Did you, ever, did you ever separate at all? I mean, did you ever get mad where you moved married, out for a day or two? Married the first two? week we were married. First week? The first week, she didn't like a necktie that I wore. And we were... No, about the first month it was we were married, and she didn't like a necktie, and she wanted me to change it, and I wouldn't change it, because I liked it. And she left and went home to Los Angeles, and I didn't see her for about three more weeks until I got there. Just but because she didn't like she the necktie? Didn't, because I wouldn't change the necktie. I was stubborn, but I went back and I saw her, and she was glad to see me. <laughs> <laughs> I had on a different necktie. But she <laughs> You know, I didn't wear the same necktie. In fact, I never wore it again. <laughs> now, this is it. This that's is the, the first necktie right there. I had it on. <laughs> yeah. Now, we're going to show you a, a piece of tape from uh, Jack's show, which comes up tomorrow night. And I have not seen this myself. Uh, does this need... you want to tell them what happened on this? Yes. Because Let me tell I you didn't what. know you were going to leave this in Let the show. Let me tell you what I happened. I did this just for you. Yeah, you did it. You, tr you thought you were going to play me a dirty trick. Right. And here's what happened. He and I... In fact, you're on pretty early in the show. Yeah, right up front. I must, I must remember to tell everybody, to tell who's all on, a, on the show, 
See, you're the first one on. Right. You got George Burns. That's right. And Red George Fox. George Burns, Red Fox. Dinah Shore. Dinah Shore. The uh, DeFranco family. The DeFranco family with Tony DeFranco. Right. Who else have we got on? Me. Here? And you. Well, I said you. Oh, I good. said you were the first one. Good, good. You know. <laughs> and anyway, when he made his exit, Johnny was supposed to come back and say one more thing and make an exit. So he came back and forgot what he was supposed to say. So he walked off. Then he came back again and said the wrong thing and did this about four times. And finally, to make up for it, he came back the last time. Don't and tell here's me. the clip. This is, he did this to me. Here's the clip. That you, this is what he looked like. This is classy comedy, folks. Classy comedy. Are you showing the first time? You know. <laughs> now look, Johnny, I'm trying to do a special, and this is no time to talk business. It makes you look cheap. What? <laughs> I said it makes you look cheap. Look, Johnny, there's a time for everything. Money and everything. There's a time for business, a time to eat, a time to sleep, a time to make love. Oh, you remember, huh? <laughs> Of course I remember. It's like roller skating. <laughs> Some things you never forget. <laughs> when, you, when you get angry, your eyes dance. Do you know that? They do? Yeah. You're a well, living doll. All right. Well, do yeah. me a favor yeah. now. Get out of here, will you? Well, get off the stage. All right. Right. Let me carry oh, you on. Oh. We have a long show. All right. Yeah. And another thing. I'm going to tell you something, yeah. and I told you before, you're never going to be on my show again. Oh. Just remember that. All right. Okay. And I'll tell you something else, waiter. I'm not coming to your party Saturday night, either. You weren't invited. <laughs> How did he find out? How did I find out? I'm catering it. <laughs> Try to be a nice guy. You know, he doesn't realize what a tough time I had finding that. I think you shot it and stuck it. <laughs> now, <laughs> real classy comedy. Now, now. Ladies and gentlemen. That was the third time we had done that yeah, particular that's the third scene. Time. That's the now, third ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what I did to him, and he doesn't know it till now. We left that that's, in my show. That's in tomorrow night. Well, I just did it to off. break you up. We, I, I'd blown that line about three times walking off, and I said, what could you do in, all in a tuxedo and black tie that would be so klutzy? I says, you drop your pants. <laughs> but I never thought to. Did you Some ever resort comedian. to that to get a laugh? Never. Hmm. I walked on with no pants, but I never <laughs> dropped them like that. You are going to, I didn't mention this uh, on the opening of the show, because uh, I'm not going to tell them, but, uh, but next February the 14th, Valentine's Day, is your birthday, right. which is a lovely day to have a birthday. Um, it is, coming up. Uh, ha uh, have you told people yet that you're over 39? I mean, officially. Well, I don't like to tell my right age because uh, let him guess. Anybody who wants to guess over 39 is all right with me. How old? You're right. <laughs> he knows. Do you believe that? He knows. Everybody in the world would be a liar here if anybody said you even look close to 80, and I mean that. I know, but it scares the hell out of me, just the same. <laughs> no, it, it shouldn't. I feel better now at 80. I will be 80. I feel better than when I was actually 39. You know why? Yeah. Because when I was 39, I was still some kind of a star, wasn't I? You were certainly, of course. All right. So, but I was worried because at 39, you worry, you want to sustain, you want to remain a star. But now, at this age, where are they going to throw me? 
They're not going to throw me out any place. It's too late. So I'm not worried anymore. I know they're, they're going to have a big series of parties for you, I understand, down in Palm Springs to celebrate yeah. uh, the 80th birthday. 80 years, that's, that's remarkable. Well, I hope I just have, uh, can sustain a third as long of the time as you have in this business, really. And George look, Burns is almost as old as I am. Uh, George is what, two years younger? Two I think years younger. 78. Yeah, he's 78. I think he looks older than I do, don't you? <laughs> I didn't mean it. George! George! George, I didn't mean it. You know, you know what he does on George, our George, show? George, well, come on. You know what he does on my show, which you'll see tomorrow night? We play two statues in Rome. <laughs> and we're supposed to be 500 years old. And he insists on singing. And we trained about 20 uh, pigeons. That the minute he starts, and we got him trained. You can train all animals to do anything. As soon as he sings, these 20 pigeons jump on his head. And you'll see it in the show tomorrow. That's He's fun. very funny in that show. That's tomorrow. Eight, eight, eight You're to, funny too eight on the show. Thank you. Everybody it was fun being on the show. show. We'll take a brief Red pause. Red Fox is funny on the show. We'll be right back after this. Those of us and uh, those of you who follow Jack's radio show over the years remember his, the wonderful cast, well, of course, with Mary and Don Wilson and uh, Rochester, Dennis Day, Phil Harris, even going back to the days of Kenny Baker, one of the men on his show who played so many different characters, and as you probably know, has done the voices of most of the famous cartoon characters, from Bugs Bunny to Porky Pig to Barney Rubble to the Flintstones, and we'll talk about some of the other things that Mel has done yeah. on your show over the years. He's, uh, he's really some artist. Would you welcome Mr. Mel Blank? Mel. Good, thank you, Johnny. Is that it? Pretty close. That's a remark. How many years did you work before people actually saw you doing anything? I mean, you, you people who do voices and start with voices uh, do very well in the business. A lot of my friends like uh, Junie Foray and other people who do the voices, everybody hears them but don't but very seldom see them until television came along, right? That's right. I started uh, radio in 1927. Twenty-seven. Any idea how I'm older than Jack Benny? No. <laughs> no. no yeah. You started that early? 1927. A program in Portland, Oregon, called the uh, Hoot Owls, in which I sang a song. My brother Henry accompanied me, and uh, I sang this crazy little song. Yeah. Wanna eat? Wanna eat? Wanna eat it? <laughs> how does one get into that rather? Uh small group of people who do voices. Uh, you, you show up, or there, do people say we want a voice of something, and you go in and audition for a particular character? Or? No, I, uh, I tried for a year and a half to get into Schlesinger cartoons. And uh, this uh, head of the company, or head of the voice department, kept saying, uh, we have all the voices we need. We don't uh, need anybody. And I kept this up for every two weeks I'd go there, and uh, he kept saying the same thing. I said, just listen to me anyway. And... Uh, Kept saying, I have all the voices we need. Finally, the guy died. It's <laughs> 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 not nice to laugh at the dead. For those no. of, well, anyway, I went to the next guy in charge, a guy by the name of Treg Brown, and uh, I told him that uh, I would like to have him hear me. He said, sure, what can you do? I auditioned for him, and then he said, great, would you do it for the directors? So I auditioned for the directors, and one of the directors said, uh, can you do a drunken bull? A drunken bull? Yeah, that had eaten some sour mash. And I had to... <laughs> that's not him. And, uh... Well, that's from that picture you saw. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I thought, uh, yes, I said, I can do a drunken bull. He said, how would it sound? I said, well, it sounded a little, a little like you was looking for some, some sour mash. <laughs> he said, great, what are you doing Tuesday? He said, let's say Tuesday. I wasn't doing a darn thing. I see. I think I can make it all right. Just can squeeze it That was it the in. first voice I did in the cartoons. And the director that asked me to do it was Frank Tashlin, who's now yes. a director in pictures. I certainly is. How did Bugs Bunny come about? Did, now, did you audition for that? No, voice they again? showed me a picture of uh, this crazy little character. And they said he was tough, told me what the storyline was going to be. And I thought, uh, let's see now, which is the toughest voice in the United States? 
It's either Brooklyn or the Bronx. So he said, why don't I put the two together? So uh, that's what came out, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> What is funny, when they do these voices to cartoons, and we tried to just show it one night, and it didn't work because you, we couldn't get the proper setup, is when they show a cartoon or an animated picture, and you see people like Mel and Alan Reed and June Foray and Paul Fries and somebody who do a lot of these voices, watching the cartoon and standing around a microphone, four adult people doing these voices is the funniest thing. That is hysterical. They should film that. You know, grown men going... <laughs> <laughs> and going home after a day's work. Now, for years, when I listened to Jack's show, and he did... Well, get... they filmed everything yeah. that he did on my show, and he did all the characters. He did, uh... No, if first I let... place, you did the train announcer, didn't you? Oh, the... Uh, how did you do that? Uh, the train show. leaving on track five uh, for Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. Come on, there. <laughs> <laughs> then you'd add something. <laughs> Don't get off at Coop. Kamunga, we don't stop there. <laughs> you know, for years now, people oh, wait, who lived back in the Midwest one... didn't know there was a place as Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. We thought we never heard of such places. We thought they were making let, them up. Let me tell you, we did one show. He stopped in the middle of Kook for a long time, and I said something, and then listen to what he said. Do the one where you said Anaheim, Azusa, and Kook. Anaheim, Azusa, train, and Start with train leaving. Train leaving on track five for Anaza, Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. Oh, no. Among us. <laughs> no! <laughs> Damn it, you spoiled it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm doing a... Oh, let's try it again. No. Let's try I'm it again. tired of it? <laughs> no, no, I wanted to hear the way you actually did it. Train leaving on track. Give me my signal. This is the rehearsal. Right. Rehearsal. All you right. can go out. Okay. All right. All right. Train, Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. Oh no. Oh yes. A manga. A manga. A manga. A manga. A manga. <laughs> I remember. It. He does it. Forty. Forty years ago, I don't remember. It. Forty years, he remembers everything. What now, else? What when I used to listen things? to your show, I'm going to ask him this. And you would go out in the Maxwell and start the car. Yes. I'd say those are the wildest sound effects I've ever heard in my life because most mechanical things are done by a, by a recorded thing. And Mel used to do it when I'd go see the radio show. You'd, Mel would stand up on the stage. Yeah, I, I used to say... And Rochester. the audience would go into hysterics. I used to say, Rochester, get the Maxwell started because I want to leave. And Mel would be the Maxwell. Gee, you ought to have a mic right near you. for the can can we, have can, we can drop this down. Can you drop this Just down? put in the picture, don't worry yeah. about it. So I said, get Rochester, get the Maxwell started. And he would go out, and you'd hear the Maxwell, and this would, this would be it. Go Well, still sounds like that without him. You know. <laughs> and the studio audience used to fall down from laughter just well, watching Mel do these things. Freddie's trying to, Freddy's trying to tell us something. English, English horse. The English huh? horse. Oh, how they tried oh, to catch wait, him. Wait, wait, you've got to hear this. <laughs> you know, we used to do weeks of westerns called Buck Benny Rides Again. Right, but Andy Devine. So we'd have a horse. Andy Devine would be on it. He'd call me Buck and everything. So he would do the horses. So first, do just the horse, the Winnie. That's right. Now, one day my writers and I got together and we said, let's play a dirty trick on Mel Blanc and see what he does at rehearsal. He must comment on it. So we said, let's write in an English horse. <laughs> For no reason. Now, we thought, certainly, he must say to us, what the hell does this mean, an English horse? He never said a word to us, never opened his mouth. When it came time to do the English horse, this is what he did, and we didn't even know it. <laughs> Never, 
never said a word to us. Just oh, did that's it. That's great. Just did it. That is great. What else did we do? You did the seesaw. Uh, yeah. yeah. That routine. The Mexican? Yes, you did. Used to do the Mexican... Uh... Always the Mexican routine. And it always went the same way, and people screamed at the same things. And I would see him, he'd be a Mexican. Let's say I'd be at a railroad station. Do you know the routine you used to do when you did the treasure of the Sierra Madre? And you kept saying, see? Si. Yeah, that's that? it. You know that's that? the routine. So I would say, uh, I'd go I'm up to him you. and I'd say, pardon me, uh, are, are you leaving for Mexico City? Si. <laughs> <laughs> Is your train late? Si. Have you... <laughs> Have you been waiting here a long time? Si. <laughs> What's your name? Sign. <laughs> Sign? Si. <laughs> Is that a friend of yours sitting with you? Si. You, your sister? Si. I'm afraid to ask this next one. What's her name? Sue. Sue? Si. <laughs> oh, what else? Where'd we go from there? What does she do for a living? Huh? What she oh, do yeah. Oh, oh, this one. Finally, I said to her, what thing? This wasn't even the script. I said, what does she do for a living? So. <laughs> So, so, see. <laughs> oh, those are great routines. Great. Oh, those were some of the best constructed comedy moments ever on radio. So little dialogue. Great construction. Boom, 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 and then the topper, and then the topper. Mm -hmm. and we'll take a brief pause. We'll be right back. Stay with us.